I were talking at my folks there when we sometime at like this time last year, we were just talking about getting used to the game and enjoying the season. You guys are 6-0 uh, for the first time since 1935. I know you guys don't have that on the board somewhere, but what does it mean to you to, to see not just the way that perhaps you guys didn't play the way you wanted to offensively, but all three things, to see the way that Andrew leads, to see the way that you guys kind of pick each other up? First, we have the greatest running back in the history of the CFL. So that obviously helps him tremendously. He's been there, done that. He's got a whole bunch of cups. And obviously, he's one of our big leaders on this team. He shows it every day. Um, but, you know, I think as a as a whole offense, defense, special teams, we came out today, everybody, you know, um, collaborated and, and did their thing. I think that, you know, sometimes if the offense is, is down, defense picks it up. Defense is down, offense picks it up, special teams. I mean, when, when they score, good, great things happen. So, um, you know, obviously wanted to do a lot better, but I think just overall there, there was good effort. Yeah, we stubbed our toes sometimes, but it's a team effort. It's a team win. We talk about going 1-0, and and we did that. You have stubbing something. How is your feeling? Oh. Yeah. Andrew, tell us what it means to be the fifth leading running back in CFL history. Yeah, I mean, uh, I touched on it after the game, but um, I mean, the biggest thing for me is, is – the history of this league, there's been so many amazing players, uh, amazing running backs. Um, you know, and it's, it's an absolute honor to, uh, to to crack the top five. And um, this is my history with, with Charles Roberts too. You know, just you know, seeing when I was 18 years old at, at Palomino nightclub and telling him, you know, being a cocky kid, you know, I'm coming to take your job. You know, and to be able to pass him now, you know, you know, how many years later, it's uh, it's definitely surreal. It's amazing uh, feat. And um, the biggest thing for me is is my teammates. Um, the coaches that I've had over, the, over my career, um, the great organizations that I've played for, and, and honestly, the Toronto Argonauts for, for you know, kind of pushing me to come back this year, um, you know, to, to, to take a different role, um, and, and you know, we kind of relish in that role right now, and, and still loving the game the way I do. So, um, yeah, these young guys keep me going. Um, you know, it's inspiring to see the, the work um, and, and where we've come from. You know, since when I first got here last year to where we are now. Um, it's broken and, and this team really plays for each other. This team really has each other's backs and, and it's complimentary football you know, across the board. And uh, it's just inspiring and, and you know, it's, it's, it's revamped the love, of my, the love of the game for me. And uh, I'm just honored to, to still be playing this game and, and you know, be healthy enough to, to do it and still be able to make some plays out there with these old legs. Have you been in touch with Charles recently, or do you expect to reach out to him after this? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't seen him in a, in a few years. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. Uh, I mean, he was. He was a big brother to one of the guys in my high school team. So we definitely ran into him a bunch of you know back in the day. And you know, obviously, I don't, I don't even think he's in Canada anymore. But you know, it's still. Uh, you know, he was an amazing player. You know, a guy that I'd go down to Canada Stadium and watch him play, and you know, just be in awe. And uh, you know, just again, just to, to be able to be, you know, uh, you know, in the same talks with him is an absolute honor. And, you know, uh, I'm just extremely blessed and, and appreciative. What was it like to get the game ball in the locker room? Yeah, it's it's awesome, man. I mean, we, we this team is just full of talent across the board. You know, you look look at our, our, our offense alone, and uh, any any given guy can can can, be, can make a game breaking play. Um, any given guy can take over a game, and, and you know, we, we got we got we got Chad Kelly swag at the helm, and he brings an attitude and and uh, a demeanor and, and a no put attitude. And like I said, it's just inspiring to be around these guys um, and, and just to be appreciated by them, you know, with, with the efforts I put in every day. And, and just being, just leading by example for me, um, you know, I feel like, you know, just being that leader in the locker room and, and, and helping these guys along and, and just, you know, dropping my little nuggets that I've had over my, my career um, to, to help help them get better individually and then, and then as a team and as an offense. Chad, there's a lot of talk about you being the front runner for MLP. Have you heard that hype or are you blocking it out? Yeah, you've got to block it out. I think the biggest thing for us as a team is just going to want to know and let all the other things take care of itself. So. Is he the MOP? I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's the MOP right now, for sure. And, and the thing about Chad is that, you know, like I said, he has he has that, he has that fire in his eyes. And, and it doesn't matter what he does, he comes hungry every day. Um, he, he strives for perfection. Um, and the point to you know, he... he, he he brings it out of us, and and you know, my, my biggest thing is making sure that he he's always on his P's and Q's and, and keeping level headed, and he's been doing a great job. I'm super proud of this guy, and you know, the sky's the limit for Chad Kelly. The Argos are six and zero for the first time since 1935. Why is this team so great, and what does it mean to you guys? 
yeah, I mean, like I said, we, we, we just care. We generally care about each other. And, uh, you know, like I said, man, we just we got so many ballers on this team that, uh, you know, special teams, defense, offense, um, and a great coaching staff that comes up with a good plan. So, I mean, uh, you know, offensively, we need we need to be a lot better. We haven't even scratched the surface yet of how good we can be. And, you know, we kind of have these third quarter laws that we got to get past and, and really just, you know, put our, put our foot on teams next and we're, you know, up 21 points and, you know, put, put the game away in that second half early and not let them come back into it. So, you know, we got to get back to the drawing board and, and find a way to, to build each other up and, and make sure that we're not stubbing, stubbing our toes. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's not about peaking right now. It's a long season still. And we all know, you know, once we get to September, uh, Labor Day, that's when the real season will start. So, you know, we just got to keep building, building on what we're doing now and, and keep going, you know, for, for the rest of the season. Chad, what do you think about that's being 6-0? Yeah, I think Drew hit it right on the head, right? It's it, it's cliche to keep on saying, but it's one and oh, one and oh, you know, on this play, everybody do their one twelve, but you know, what I've seen from this this team is guys are working hard, like, you know, it, we we say, Hey, come in at nine, leave by one. You know, guys are in here early, guys leave late, they're putting in the time, they're putting in the effort. Um, there's guys that stay after practice to, you know, work on their craft, and that's what separates teams, right? It's, it's by the hard work, the dedication, and, and the will to be the best you can be, right? Thanks, guys.